happened May 19, 1868, with the Phoenix stage a half hour out of Denver. Little Billy Wilson at the range was in for trouble, real trouble. police headquarters, we got to work on the case. My partner, George Romack, Chief Richards, driver Billy Wilson, and I went over the wanted posters of all the outlaws known to have worked the area. I don't know. I just don't know, Smitty. You kept coming back to these three, Billy. Niles, Litback, and Judson. Only on account of their size. He was wearing a mask, don't forget. Shall I tell him? We were just testing you, Billy. We already checked. Niles was in Wyoming last week and lit backs in Virginia City. Which leaves Judson. Then I must be wrong about all three of them. I've been held up twice in my time by Hob Judson and he don't never wear a mask. So that was the first time. Well, you keep thinking of it, Billy. I'll check you next time you pull in. Right, sir. Mrs. Ward still too sick for questioning? So the doc says. She took Cap's death pretty hard, you know. Take a ride. We had no magic formula to work with. Just hours of writing, talking, questioning, listening and looking. From dawn to dark each day. Plain drudgery, but no success. I even considered the dead man's only competition in town, the Harlow brothers. But again, I had nothing to go on. Then a few days later, Hap Ward's widow was able to come into headquarters. How many other people knew Hap was bringing that money back on Tuesday? Well, I don't know. Is that important, Smitty? Might be very important. We've been thinking an outsider did this, but could have been a local man. Someone we all know. Well, I... It's my own fault. You see, we thought we were going to lose the store. And then Hap's cousin in Utah said he'd lend us the $5,000. Such good news. I, I guess I told all my friends. If I thought I had anything to do with what happened. Not a thing. I'm sure you didn't. Did the Harlows ever offer to buy your store? Why should they want to buy our store? They were driving us out of business anyway with their high-handed, cheating ways. <laughs> Then I went down to talk to Billy Wilson to see if he remembered anything new. Hi, Smitty. Be right with you. Meet Miss Tyler and her boy, Tim. Tom Smith, Denver Police. He is more man than boy. Can someone bring in the luggage? Yes, ma'am. I sure can. Let me give you a hand with it. Here, no. Here. With a lady. Nice and friendly, huh? Yeah. Well, I noticed. Been able to think of anything new when that fellow that shot happened? I tried, Smitty, but I was so wall-eyed scared I couldn't see straight. I do remember, though, he talked kind of thick, like he had a prune in his mouth. Anything else? No, just said he wanted half ward. You sure he asked for a half ward? Yeah. That all? Sorry, Smitty, I guess I ain't thinking so clear today either. Carried passenger money again. You carried passenger money today? 
Miss Tanner had over $5,000 in that bag you wanted to help her with. No wonder she was so friendly. Thanks, Billy. Mm, you bet. On the way to the Harlow's, I bumped into George. He'd been out to the hold-up scene again. Find out anything out there? Well, nothing that would help us. Hmm? You tell the chief I think our killer may be a local boy after all. Well, why? How do you figure that? What was Hap Ward's real name? Well, Frank, you know that. That's what I mean. The man who killed him asked for him by his nickname, Hap. <laughs> Ward, the killer had said. Not Frank, his given name, but Hap, his nickname. Now, that sure sounded like a local man. And it could be one of the Harlows, either Bert or Ben. Well, look who come in. Hello there, Smitty. Bert, how's business? Oh, ain't near as good as police work. I'll say that. What's on your mind, Smitty? You still happen to remember where you were last Tuesday when Hap Ward was killed? Last Tuesday, we was both right here in the store. It took us all day to sack the grain. Was well, Tuesday, wasn't it, Ben? Yeah, that's right. My back still aches from it. Uh, that figures. Of course, uh, you knew Hap was coming in on the stage with a lot of money. Mm, no. Everybody else in town knew it. It's funny the information slipped by you two. Pa, hey, Pa, me and Ralph. What's he after? Get out of here, Lou, before I belt you. Get! You know anyone besides yourself who's interested in buying Ward store? Mm, nope. Of course, being his only competition, you'd know quite a bit about his business. Mm, little. Knew he had to make a bank loan. Know how much? Mm, haven't any idea. Sure you do, Ben. It's printed right here in yesterday's paper. Oh, that's so? Haven't had a chance to read yesterday's paper yet. By the way, you two happen to know a lady named Jody Tyler? No. Nope. nope. Why? Just wondered. I was worried. The mocking faces of the Harlow brothers had talked loud and clear. But then, on the way back to headquarters, I had made another stop. Oh, it's me. Rumack was just telling me that the man that shot Ward called him by his nickname. That's right, Chief. Well, at least that's something. Where do we go from there? Well, I just over at the bank had a little talk with Adams. Mrs. Ward was just in there. Paid off that note. Where'd she get the money? A lady by the name of Jody Tyler. She just bought the Ward store. Well, who's she? Widow. Came into town this morning. Had a little boy about nine years old. Where'd she come from? State County said she got on at Phoenix. No previous address. Did you check that money that was stolen from Ward? Put a tracer on it. Ain't it funny that a woman comes into town and buys Ward's store with the same amount of money stolen from her? I sure would like to know more about that Tyler woman. Smitty, so maybe you... I was just on my way. <laughs> when I got to Jody Tyler's store, I saw the Harlow brothers just leaving. That made me wonder. Mom. Huh? Mrs. Tyler, I'm Tom Smith. I met you. Yes, I remember. Those two men have just left here. Any friends of yours? Well, that's my business, not yours. Yes, ma'am, I guess it is. If you're looking for Mrs. Ward, she's at home. She doesn't own the store anymore. I do. Uh, you didn't waste much time, did you? I don't believe in wasting time or words. And I'm in no mood to be questioned by the police. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, Mrs. Tyler, because that's my job, asking questions. Questions like how you happened to show up in Denver with the same amount of money a man had stolen from him two days before you got here. Also, how you happen to come straight to that man's store and buy it. Since you're the detective, Mr. Smith, why don't you go and find out those things for yourself? I think I will. Tim, do something for me, will you, son? 
read this list of names. Al Niles, Casey Winters, Johnny Litvak, Leslie Whitman, Hob... Hob Judson, Art Neary, Bill Clark. I don't know what you're trying to do, Mr. Smith, but would you mind leaving? Sorry, ma'am, but like I said before, my job is asking questions. Thank you, Tim. I had reported back to the chief after seeing Mrs. Tyler, and we were heading for the boarding house for a bite to eat. As far as I'm concerned, Mrs. Tyler and the Harlow boys are in this together. What's George doing there? That's the Tyler boy. Let me go! Easy. What happened? Tyler, kid, back in that alley over there, three kids beat the devil out of him. Said the leader was Bert Harlow's son. Why'd they do it, Tim? They said if me and Ma didn't get out of town, they'd beat me up every day. Also told him he's going to get his uncle to kill him all. He also told him his uncle is Hob Judson, did he? Why, how do you... Yeah, Hob Judson is my uncle. He's the fastest gun in the world. After he kills them kids, he'll come after you. All of you. where Mrs. Tyler got her hands on Hap Ward's money. Do you suppose the kid's making that up? No. I was over there this morning. No, he's not making it up, Chief. On the Chief's orders, I went to see Mrs. Tyler that afternoon at the hotel. Smith, please come in. How's Tim? Oh, he's sleeping now. I'm sorry about what happened to him. Well, he'll be all right. Won't you sit down? Mrs. Tyler, I came here to ask you a question. Well, I'll answer anything, but... But first, I do want to apologize for having been so rude to you. <laughs> well, that's not important. By the way, do you want us to pick up the Harlow boy? Well, what good would that do? It was his father and uncle who were behind it. When they came to see me at the store, you remember, they uh, warned me to give up the store and get out. They meant it. I'm sure they did. Uh, Mr. Smith, I, I need help. Well, don't worry about the Harlows. We'll protect you from that. No, it's not only the Harlows. My brother-in-law is Hob Judson. I found out about that. Yes, I know. Tim told me. And this morning, when he stumbled over Hobbs' name, I knew you suspected something. The money for the store. Where'd you get it? Oh, I got it. You think I got it from Hobbs? That's what I came here to find out. Uh, I sold a house and a store in Phoenix. Here are the papers. Do you want to see them? I've sold six houses and two stores in the last four years trying to keep Tim away from Hobbs. When the stage driver told me the Ward store was for sale, I decided to see it, and I bought it. That's all there is to it. Where is Hob Judson now? He was in Phoenix the day I left. And he could have gotten here a day ahead of you. If he's here, Tim will know it before anyone else. Oh, you're an officer, Mr. Smith. You know what Hob Judson is like. He just won't stay away from us. What happened to Mr. Ward is the thing Hobb does best. That's why I never want Tim to see Hobb again. I can see how a boy Tim's age could come fascinated with a man like that. No, we want to talk to you. Okay. Oh, you here? You know she's Hobb Judson's kin? Yes, I know all about it. Does it make her guilty of something? Maybe not, but it makes us sure we don't want her in this town. I'm staying here. We come here to tell you to get out. You get out. All of you. Well, sorry you don't see it our way, Smitty. But of course you ain't seeing too clear. Ah, 
Sorry we busted in on you, too. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> yeah, we're going. We know when we ain't wanted. Yeah. Why do you wear a gun? I bet you can't even use it. That's why I do wear it, Tim. So I won't have to use it. My Uncle Hobb would never let any man tell my ma to get out of town. You get back to bed, Timmy. Hurry up. Now, do you see what I mean? Yes, I do. Take me. Tidal strain sober and plumb to the ground. tells you which direction the fire was started from. There we are. Go get him, Mr. Smith. Gotta have proof first. Now look here, Tim. Let me show you. Here's where the fire was started from. Now you call this a set, you see? You know they did it. There's a lot of difference between proof and suspicion. Now you see? Tim! You and your fancy ideas. Uh, I was just trying to kill two birds with one stone. Get rid of the clothes I wore and the toddler woman at the same time. What if they find something? He can't. They were soaked in kerosene. Hey, given up already. I hope. Let's go. the other guy. What happened? I got in a fight. Ah. Oh, I told you, my finder. Now listen, boy. There's a miner's shack in the woods just north of town, about a half mile past that waterfall. If you want anything, just let me know. How's your ma? They're trying to run her out of town. Who's they? They told her not to buy the store. And when she did, the kids beat me up. They just burned down the store. Harlow Brothers. Mr. Smith knows they did it. Smith? You mean Whispering Smith? Yeah. He's a friend of me and Ma. He told the Harlows to lay off. He knows they did it, but he don't go after them. He keeps looking for proof. It's the Harlows. Happen to know where they are? Sloan, down the street. Now you go home to your Ma. I'll do like I say. My name's Hop Justice. Which be the Harlow brothers? If you don't make your play when I count five, I will. One, two, three, four, five. Judson, I first had to convince a loyal youngster that a man he loved was all wrong. Timmy, you think a lot of you, Uncle Hobb, don't you? Uncle Hobb never told me a lie, Mr. Smith. Neither have I. 
Look here, I want to show you something. Remember these? I dug them out of the ashes the day after the fire. Yeah. What are they? Mrs. Ward told me this is a buckle off Mr. Ward's money belt. And this is from the satchel they used to start that fire with. That means the man that started that fire is the same man that killed Mr. Ward. You know who it was? Hank Addison over at the general store remembers selling this. Some time ago. To Ben Harlow. Well, then you did prove it. Mm-hmm. Enough to convict him of murder. We found the stolen money in his house. The numbers matched with the ones Mr. Ward's cousin wired to us. I'd had them in jail another half hour. But your Uncle Hobb couldn't wait, Tim. Neither could you. Now everything's all wrong. Yeah. You see, Tim, when a man jumps in like your Uncle Hobb did, without the patience of the law, then everything has to wind up all wrong. I guess so. So there's nothing left for me to do but to go after him. Now it's up to you whether I go with some other men or go after him alone. You'd go alone? If you show me where he is, I give you my word he'll have the same chance he gave the Harlow. Kill you, Mr. Smith. I hope not. How about it? Will you take me to him? He'll take us both there. <laughs> took us to the cabin where Judson was hiding. I gave the boy a message for his uncle. Told him to come out without his guns and within five minutes, or I'd come in after him. I think you'd better get out of sight. Mr. Smith's there alone. Honest. He'll wait there till I tell him what you're gonna do. This Mr. Smith. Your ma like him? I don't know. Maybe a little. You like him too, huh? He's all right. Please don't kill him, Uncle Hobb. Shoot his hand, or his gun, or his shoulder. But please don't kill him. Well, maybe his idea is best. I broke out a lot of jails before. Break out of this one, too. I'll tell you what. You go tell him I'm taking off my guns and coming out. Honest? Why, I ain't never lied to you, have I? Huh? No. And you broke out a lot of jails before. Why, sure. Go on, now. over there with your mother. Why? He's going to give himself up. What'd I tell you? Judson? Come on out, Judson. That has to be kept from admiring guns and what guns can do. And the person who shoots the gun has a great deal to do with how the kid reacts. That's why it wouldn't have made much sense to tell Tim I'd fired only one shot, one that hit Judson's hand. Wouldn't have made sense to mention it at all.